He says the United States could lose the AI race and that China is pulling ahead. Those using NVIDIA's imported chips do not qualify for these discounts. The message, again, is simple. Use Chinese, not American. Any other country in the world. In the AI space, almost 70 percent of patents are held by Chinese players. The CEO of the world's most valuable company just made a statement that's sending shockwaves through Silicon Valley and Washington. Jensen Huang, whose NVIDIA dominates AI chip manufacturing with a market cap exceeding $3 trillion, publicly stated that China will win the AI race against the United States. Not might win, will win. This isn't some random tech blogger making predictions. This is the man who literally supplies the hardware powering virtually every major AI breakthrough in America, from OpenAI's GPT models to Google's Gemini, warning that the West is about to lose the most consequential technological competition of our lifetime. And the timing couldn't be more alarming because his warning comes just as Chinese AI labs are releasing models that are genuinely competing with or even surpassing American frontier labs at a fraction of the development cost. So what exactly did Jensen Huang say? Why are his comments causing such intense controversy? And perhaps most importantly, is he actually right? Let's examine the statement that's gone viral, the immediate backlash it generated, and what's really happening in the AI race that most people aren't paying attention to. According to reporting from the Financial Times, Jensen Huang stated that China is nanoseconds behind America in artificial intelligence capabilities, and he issued a stark warning that current U.S. policies restricting AI chip exports to China could catastrophically backfire by cutting off American companies' access to approximately half of the world's AI developers and researchers, the majority of whom are based in China. His argument essentially boils down to this. For the United States to maintain its lead and ultimately win the AI race, it must race ahead technologically while simultaneously ensuring the global AI ecosystem, explicitly including China, is built on American technology infrastructure, like NVIDIA's CUDA platform and chip architecture. This puts him in direct opposition to current U.S. policy under the administration, which is pushing the exact opposite strategic direction. The policy framework advocates that the most advanced AI chips should be reserved exclusively for United States customers and allies, with only less capable, deliberately hobbled chips potentially sold to China. This creates an absolutely fascinating geopolitical and economic tension. On one side, you have Jensen Huang, who obviously wants NVIDIA to sell their cutting-edge chips to Chinese customers, which would unlock an enormous revenue stream for the company he leads. On the other side, you have U.S. national security officials and policymakers who are desperately trying to maintain America's AI advantage by any means necessary, including preventing China from accessing the most advanced computational hardware that powers frontier AI development. Jensen's statement that China will win went massively viral across social media platforms, and understandably so. You have to realize that most public statements from CEOs, particularly CEOs of the world's most valuable companies, are carefully calibrated to avoid absolute declarations. Last week, NVIDIA crossed a big milestone. It became a $5 trillion company, the only company in the world to achieve this feat. He says the United States could lose the AI race and that China is pulling ahead. But why does he think that China is winning? Why does he think the U.S. is falling behind? You simply cannot say with certainty that one outcome will definitely occur, or that a particular strategy definitely won't work, because people interpret those statements literally, and they create enormous ripple effects in markets, policy discussions, and public perception. In this case, the statement spread like wildfire on Twitter and other platforms because people are genuinely uncertain about whether America will maintain its AI leadership, and hearing the CEO of NVIDIA express doubt is genuinely alarming. The backlash was swift and intense enough that NVIDIA posted an official clarification on social media, literally just one day later. The statement reiterated that Jensen had said, China is nanoseconds behind America in AI capabilities, and emphasized it's vital that America wins by racing ahead and winning over developers worldwide. The clarification essentially argued that NVIDIA wants Chinese developers building on American architecture because the alternative scenario, where Chinese developers build a completely independent AI stack on fundamentally Chinese architecture that pulls ahead technologically, would leave American companies genuinely behind. But the drama intensified when Jensen himself pushed back against media characterization of his comments. In an interview clip that's been widely circulated, though we can't play the full video here due to copyright concerns, Jensen clarified his actual position. 
He stated that what he actually said was that China possesses very strong AI technology and employs many exceptional AI researchers. In fact, a genuinely surprising statistic he emphasized is that 50% of the world's AI researchers are located in China. They develop extremely capable AI technology, and in fact, some of the most popular open source AI models currently available globally originate from Chinese research labs. They're moving extraordinarily fast technologically. Therefore, the United States must continue advancing incredibly quickly, because otherwise the competitive landscape is absolutely fierce. But here's something that adds another dimension to this entire discussion. While debates rage about Jensen's comments, Fortune magazine dropped an analysis about a month or two ago that many people missed, and it reveals something genuinely concerning about America's competitive position. The article argued that China's electrical grid infrastructure is substantially ahead of the United States, and that this advantage could prove decisive in winning the AI race. Here are the specifics. China apparently maintains electrical reserve capacity of 80 to 100 percent of their actual energy consumption needs. China's state-owned energy enterprises invest in massive long-term infrastructure projects with absolutely no pressure for immediate return on investment, allowing them to build for future demand rather than current needs. And he gave three reasons. High energy costs, heavy regulation, and what he called rising incentives to large data centers. For them, electricity costs have been cut by up to 50%. Those using NVIDIA's imported chips do not qualify for these discounts. The message, again, is simple. Use Chinese, not American. Any other country in the world. In the AI space, almost 70% of patents are held by Chinese players. Meanwhile, United States AI companies are actively struggling to source sufficient energy to power their expanding data centers to the point where they may be forced to build their own dedicated power plants, which means no economies of scale and substantial duplicate infrastructure investments. China designed their grid to have excess capacity specifically available for investment-driven build-outs, exactly like the current AI boom. United States city electrical grids, by contrast, are characterized as weak and barely operating, with only about 15% reserve capacity, leading to regular shortages and blackouts in states like Texas and California. The analysis essentially concluded that China was systematically prepared for this moment, with massive excess energy capacity ready to power an AI revolution while the United States is playing infrastructure catch-up. This wasn't some fringe analysis. These were experts who traveled to China, examined their infrastructure firsthand, compared it directly to American systems, and came back genuinely alarmed at how far behind U.S. electrical infrastructure has fallen. Now currently, it doesn't appear the United States is dramatically behind in actual AI model capabilities. There are obviously many dimensions to compare, from model performance to software ecosystems to deployment scale. But the infrastructure advantage China has built is real and significant. Let me take you back to May 2025, because Jensen actually made similar comments in an earlier interview that many people are now revisiting. He was directly asked how far behind China is in AI development. His response was unequivocal. China is not behind. They're right there with us. The competition is extraordinarily close. But he emphasized this is a long-term competition, essentially an infinite race with no defined finish line or two-minute warning before the game ends. He stressed that people need to remember China is a country with tremendous national will, and they possess exceptional technical capabilities. Again, he emphasized that 50% of the world's AI researchers are Chinese nationals, so this is an industry where America will face sustained, serious competition for the foreseeable future. In another interview on a podcast, Jensen told what he described as the truth about China's AI capabilities. He explained that China is working extraordinarily hard, they're positioned right behind America technologically, and most importantly, people should absolutely not underestimate China, because it only takes one or two consecutive major breakthroughs for them to take the lead in this race. Jensen went further in his assessment of China's capabilities, pointing out several things that people consistently get wrong. First, he addressed the claim that China couldn't possibly build competitive AI chips. He said that assertion sounded absolutely insane to anyone who understands China's technical capabilities. Second, people claimed China can't manufacture advanced technology. His response, if there's one thing China demonstrably can do at world-class levels, it's manufacturing. And third, people kept saying China is years behind the United States, maybe two years or three years behind. His response was direct, they're nanoseconds behind us, literally nanoseconds. 
So America needs to compete seriously. But perhaps even more concerning than Jensen's warnings are comments from Eric Schmidt, the former CEO of Google. In a recent interview, Schmidt stated flatly that China will win the AI race unless America decides to act decisively right now. He emphasized it's absolutely imperative that the United States becomes the clear leader in AI because if China achieves AGI first, achieves artificial superintelligence first, or simply manages to completely outclass America technologically, the world could become a fundamentally different place in terms of values, governance, and human freedom. Schmidt explained that as a result of DeepSeek's incredible success and global impact, the Chinese government, which had been relatively hands-off on AI development, has now declared this another absolute national priority. They're pouring billions of dollars into AI research and development, and Schmidt warned the Chinese competitive model must be taken extremely seriously. They're exceptionally smart, they work incredibly hard, and although they don't have access to the most advanced chips due to US export restrictions, those constraints have actually caused them to invent new, more efficient algorithms like what was demonstrated in DeepSeek, which are genuinely impressive technical achievements. Schmidt's warning was stark, never underestimate Chinese competition in this space. He stated directly that China is going to win this race with enormously negative consequences unless America gets its act together immediately. And here's the thing that makes all of this even more urgent. Literally while discussions about China's AI capabilities continue, Kimi K2 was just released. For those unfamiliar, this is a Chinese model that's currently achieving state-of-the-art performance in several important categories, and not by small margins, but by genuinely significant 10 to 20% improvements in some benchmarks. What's even more shocking is that according to sources familiar with the development, this model cost only $4.6 million to train. That's a fraction of what American labs spend on comparable models. This represents a genuine wake-up call because it demonstrates that even when Chinese models catch up, they can actually surpass American-made systems, and they're doing it far more cost-efficiently. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.